What up, what up, Salvador Bravey here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demons Mod YouTube channel. On this channel, we're talking about crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and how to get funding for your passion, for your dreams. And today I'm talking about, should you actually make a prototype? So you already have an idea. Should you go to the next step? Should you make a prototype? Should you make a model? We're kind of getting to some of the things you should be aware of before you go to that next step. And it's coming up right after this. Hey brother, welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, I love talking and putting out free education, free information when it comes to getting products made, how to actually raise capital when it comes to that, how do you actually get funding with a crowdfunding campaign, how do you market these products, right? Sell them around the world, get a product in the wild, which is one of the coolest things in the world. This is my passion, this is what I love to do. I've been doing this since 2012. I have tons of resources and information out there to help you along this journey. So that being said, I really wanna help you reach your full potential. I think that for today, the way we can do that is to kind of just like get into a little bit more of the weeds of whether or not you should go to the next step, which is actually making a model, which is actually making something that other people can see, right? And really thinking that through. So let's get into that. Number one is have you actually taken this idea, which is in your head, which I imagine you've been thinking about for like wildfire for a long time, right? You got that obsession, you got that Archimedes kind of mind, right? Where you've created something new and you're like, ah, I gotta get this out there into the world somehow. I just don't know how, right? Have you gone to the next step? The next simple step is to take that idea, which is in your head, which is the imagination, take that into the two dimensional form. Form, right? Two dimensional form factor, which is just sketching this out. I know it's a fancy word, right? Just really sketching this out, man. Thinking about, okay, can I get together, you know, even just a notepad or some graph paper or something like that? Can I sketch this out? Actually, I got another great, incredible video walking through the step by step process to do this, and I'll link this up down below, right? And all the materials as well to help you actually making a model. So I'll link that up down below. But have you actually done that? Have you actually sketched something out? Have you looked at different views, whether that's from the top, from the side, right? Different ways of actually viewing this product. And it'll also help you answer so many questions which you might have related to actually making this product. So if you haven't yet done the sketch, I do recommend getting into two-dimensional form factor before you go to a model, which is obviously three dimensions, right? Or the prototype, which is more of a functional model in a certain sense, and maybe not completely functional or a golden sample, but it's definitely getting closer and closer there. So have you done that? If not, recommend obviously thinking about that. Now, I am a ready, fire, aim guy, and that's just kind of how I'm built, man. I love to take action, I love to launch new stuff, I love to write new books, I love to get things out there into the world. I love taking action, and I think that that is the number one thing that distinguishes my community from every other community out there when it comes to YouTubers that are out there. You know, people just kind of browsing around, having dreams, having aspirations, but not taking any action. We take action. If you are part of crowdcrux.com, my website, or you're part of Crowdfunding Demystified, love to put in a podcast here, obviously, on my YouTube channel, my YouTube videos. If you part of this community, you are an action taker and that is what I love about you. So when it comes to this, thinking about the next step is actually a little bit of a surprise because actually being a little bit more thoughtful, right? So being thoughtful, what do I mean by that? I mean, creating a simple product document, okay? And this is why. You wanna create a very simple product document and on that, you're gonna list a couple of different things. Number one is the purpose of the product. What is the problem which you are solving? And I know that sounds crazy because like it's in your head, right? But this is gonna help so much when you're communicating with other people. This is also gonna help when it comes to clarifying your thinking, writing, clarifying, clarifies your thinking is why I'm a writer and I love writing, right? So you've got to make sure you write the purpose of the product. What is it? Write that out physically on a page of paper or obviously digitally if you want to. Write out what is the problem that you are solving with this product because that's going to help you evaluate your different prototypes and evaluate the different stages of those prototypes when it comes to the end result, which again is the purpose of the product. Next, and this might be fancy wording, so I'll kind of make this a little bit easier, is to write out some of the objectives that you have as well when it comes to that product. So you might have an overall purpose to the product. For example, a hammer, right? Overall purpose, or for example, a wallet. Overall purpose is to hold your cash. However, you might have other objectives as well when it comes to the functionality of that product. So for example, we have two different wallets. They have the same objective, right? Or the same overall purpose, rather, sorry. They have the same purpose when it comes to being able to hold your cash, but two different products that are both wallets are doing it in different ways. So maybe one wallet is very slim wallet, maybe it's made out of leather or something like that, really just meant to hold some of your credit cards and you know some of your cash and look really nice when you're wearing a suit. Another wallet maybe is more of like a hard case wallet, really meant to be rock solid, also meant to help when it comes to security, making sure that no one rips off your scams your cards or something like that. This is a very different style of wallet, but they all both have the same product purpose, which is to hold your stuff and your financial things. So the next layer that I was talking about is writing out some of those different objectives, some of the different functionality that you wanna have potentially in this particular product prototype. So for example, with the hard case wallet, maybe we wanna have the objective that people can you know, make sure that this is very rock solid, that can withstand a certain particular force, if they will, or particular pressure, and we need 
ways to test that out because it's gonna be a very rugged and durable style of wallet. Another could be that no matter what, it's not gonna allow people to scam your cards in some way. That's gonna be one objective of the product is that it's not gonna allow any kind of scammers to actually very easily capture your credit card information. So we'd also need to then test that out. Another simple objective might be that it's more for a person who has lots of different credit cards so it allows them to hold a certain number, of, you know, and quantify that number if you can, credit cards or a certain number when it comes to their actual, you know, bill fold. These objectives or these, these bits of functionality are gonna help you so much because it then helps you evaluate the actual end product. And I'll, I'll be very clear with you, man, I'll be very honest with you. A lot of the times I have students who I do coaching calls with and they start with one idea, right? With one purpose. However, sometimes those objectives actually change as they're going through these iterations, right? Or sometimes it changes the functionality that they want to include or it changes even the design, which we'll talk about next, right? When it comes to the product. So it's so important to write these out because you can then kind of act some of them, you can keep some of them, and you can continue to go and you can evaluate those prototypes as it comes with your overall document. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrate is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrate today. Link in the description. The next is to write out your assumptions. And by assumptions, I actually mean assumptions when it comes to the end user. So this is kind of like design thinking if you want a little bit, kind of throw out an acronym or a terminology there, not an acronym, terminology. Um, this is more thinking about the end user, right? So the end user is the person, the person who's gonna pick up your product and who is going to use it, right? So what are some of the assumptions you might have about that person and how they're going to use it? Where are they gonna use it? How are they gonna solve the problem using the purpose, right? of your product. So for example, maybe my assumption is that when I have a hard case wallet, that this person is gonna put this in their back pocket. If that's my assumption, I need to test that assumption because what happens if I put it in my back pocket and it's really because it's a hard case wallet, it's not very fun to sit on when I'm in an office chair, not very fun to sit on when I'm going in a restaurant or something like that, not very fun to sit on on a park bench, right? Really thinking about that assumption which I have. Write out as many assumptions as you have about the end user, how they're gonna use the product, how they're gonna interface with it, how there is, are they gonna carry it? Are they gonna pick it up in a certain way, right? How are they gonna use this? Where are they gonna use this in their life? And how is it gonna help them in overall you know, accomplishing your, their objectives and also that problem which they wrestle with? So you're gonna write out all these assumptions that you have about your end user. That's gonna really inform different things when it comes to functionality and as well the form factor or the design, the look and the feel, how people use this, for example. So for example, just kind of throwing an idea, right? Let's say you did invent that hard case wallet and it was great, and it was amazing, but it's also very slippery, right? And people were putting this a lot of times on their desk and it was just kind of hard, it was always like slipping around. Maybe they need to put some rubber on that wallet so that it didn't always slip around, right? So you could wanna think about how will people use this, where will they use this, and overall, what are they trying to use this product for. Another good way to think about this is just to identify what you want to learn. What do you wanna learn about your customers? What do you wanna learn about your particular end users? And you're gonna create you know, prototypes to really test these different assumptions and the ways in which people use this. So the next step is really to assess you, the actual creator, the actual designer, the actual person who's coming up with this. And I like to do this through an experiment. And that experiment is thinking about and imagining for a second, imagine what it will be like when you are 90 years old. So assuming that we live until 90, right? Assuming that you have a long and healthful life and you're 90 years old and you maybe don't have as much energy as when you were a young skipper, right? A young lad and you're there kind of maybe in your bed and you're just kind of looking out the window and you're thinking about your life and you're thinking about the things that you did, you're thinking about the things you didn't do, you're thinking about the fears that you confronted and pushed through and you really were courageous and you think about the ones that you weren't really courageous enough to actually confront. I want you to think about this because when you are 90, you don't wanna be looking back and looking about the potential opportunities which you could have seized in your younger years or the even ways you which you could have tested yourself, the things that you wanted to do which you just never got around to, right? Because time flew. So if this is something when you're doing this experiment and you're thinking about this product, if this is something like you would feel bad not doing this or you would feel you know a sense of like loss, if you will, if you were older and you didn't really plow forward and just try to get a product made that you wanted, an idea which you had, and you would find I'm like, you know what? I really just wish I had done that. And I wish I plowed through the fear because it's all in my head anyway. If you come away with this exercise really thinking that, that I am telling you, it's gonna pay so many dividends for you to just move through this process and to really look at it as a learning experience and be willing to look at that a thousand pound gorilla, which is fear, and have the courage to be able to push through that, to be willing to actually just continue on, to create models, to create mock-ups, right? To be willing to create a potential functional prototype even. 
This is something that if you're just willing to confront that fear, move past uncertainty, learn as much as you can, be willing to learn through the process and keep at it, keep at it, keep persisting, you're gonna be so much happier with yourself and you're also gonna build so much confidence as a creator yourself. If you are a genuine inventor or creator, I'm telling you, man, you got tons of ideas. You got so many ideas. I'm telling you, you know, I always talk with creators and like, dude, I have like this one, I have that one, I have that one. This really gives you the skills and the fundamental. You cut your teeth on something, right? Your initial product. This gives you the ability ability to execute on all those other ideas which you have and you can then turn those into reality once you understand these fundamental skill sets, right? So if you come away from that exercise and you're like, you know what, Sal, I got to do this. I am so excited. That definitely is something, in my opinion, that is a very key indicator. If you come away from that exercise, you're like, you know what, eh, I don't really care. I mean, it would be something that'd be nice, but like, I don't really care. Probably shouldn't, because let's be honest, it's so hard anyways to do something, to stick with it, to keep with it, that you're probably just not serious about it, right? And that's great. There are things that I've started that I'm not serious about as well. There are great things that I've tried to, you know, thinking about, oh, maybe I should do this book about this, or I should create a YouTube video about this or that. And I'm like, you know what? It's exciting, but like, I'm just not that serious about it. I'm not passionate about that. I try to always lead with passion, if you're gonna be doing any kind of a longer term project, it's so much easier to stay with it in that way. So I really recommend using that exercise. If you want to reach your full potential, you have to be willing to get outside of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to take responsibility for your education, take responsibility for actually showing up and be willing to plow through and push through those obstacles that always are holding us back. And many times that is actually ourselves. You have to be willing to actually go out there and surround yourself with the right people, be listening to the right voices, right, obviously, and to have those resources to be able to plow into a project. So I think that this is something that is incredibly rewarding and something that if you want to learn more about, I have two great videos down below, which I will link up showing you how to actually make a product from a prototype, going through some of those major steps. Um, this is something where if you really are excited, for example, about you know getting something out there, you really want to do this in your own life. I think this is the same, if you will, of really going up and trying to take that job, that job that you've always wanted. Be willing to approach the girl, be willing to take a risk, right? Be willing to actually just put yourself out there and see what you can do. Be willing to push out, you know, beyond your comfort zone to try new things out. This is where growth comes from. This is where great opportunity comes from. This is where those settlers who first settled in America were willing to confront uncertainty in order to plow west with westward expansion and then had incredible fruits, obviously, from being willing to embrace that fear and that uncertainty. So is it risky? Is it a particularly risky endeavor? Well, I guess I would rephrase that question, which is what are the risks of not taking action, of not actually taking yourself seriously? And what are the risks of you just kind of atrophying and no longer be willing to actually put something out there or to take action or to persist or to work hard at something? What are the risks of that, in my opinion? And that to me is what really separates the people that are just kind of the dreamers and the people that are the doers. So man, I hope you enjoyed this video. You can learn more about my one-on-one -on -one coaching down below as well as the other links that I talked about. I hope that you enjoy this video and also my YouTube channel. And come subscribe, give me a thumbs up, help us share these videos, um, particularly when it comes to YouTube algorithm. It helps so much. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. My name is Sal and I will see you next time.